thank you very, very much, uh, uh, Pastor, Reverend, because we have to give you Pastor Amol. God bless you in Jesus' name. We just called him sometimes last week and we told him, sir, we want to be here. It, was, it, it happens to be a commandment. And so he just left every other thing that he was doing and he's here now. We want to appreciate God in your life, sir. The Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. I want to thank all our leaders that are in the house. We are praying that the Lord himself will keep you going in Jesus' name. We're sorry we are not able to settle down in any place. Because we have so many, many, many things yet to be concluded. And uh, we have to be on top of virtually everything. Running to the new arena, coming back, arranging chairs. Uh, Pastor, Desh, Pastor Dash said, I, I have become the labor prefect. So as the labor prefect, I have to be on the field to ensure that things are properly done. Yesterday, we came across about 500,000 chairs stacked somewhere that have not been touched in, in the past one year that we need to wash and then arrange at the instruction of uh, the general overseer. So that's why we will not be able to sit down here to enjoy the air conditioner with you. I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Brethren, we want to one more time thank you very much for believing in us because if you don't believe in us, you will not come for this particular program. We thank God for those that attended the first one. I think we have done the second one. This is the last one at this stage. And we are assuring you that you will never regret it in Jesus' name. Our leaders in the house, one more time, we want, want to thank you very much, sir. We are praying that the Lord will uphold you in the name of Jesus. One more time, we want to thank you on behalf of the AGO Admin and Personnel, the Nation of Asia, and all the leadership of the redeemed Christian Church of God. We're praying that the Lord God Almighty, we never allow you to regret it in Jesus' name. Thank you very much. You are very welcome. Thank you very much. Please, a round of applause for our director, admin and personnel, Pastor Vincent Adigborui. The Lord bless you. There are two major take home I want you to, to, to leave this place with. The first, being that you will have a better understanding of the problem we are facing as human managers, as leaders in the corporate sector or in the household of faith. The same principles that are applicable in the corporate sector are very much applicable in managing human beings, even in the house of faith. And we will see this together. So I said at the end of the day, we will have a mutual understanding. So I will be able to sing from the same page of the same in book. The second thing I want you to take away from this place is what I term a practical and tool that you will use to navigate immediate challenges and that will future prove your organization, your church your parish, your province. We know that when it comes to a spiritual organization, God is the constant factor. Remember a quadratic equation, isn't it? There is what? The constant variable and what? The constant factor and the variable factor, isn't it? The constant factor cannot change. But whether you will get the answer or the solution is determined by what? The variable factor. We, I mean, you and I, we are the variable factor. We determine whether we will achieve the intended solution that God has for you as an individual or for your parish or for the province. And to equip you so that there will be that guaranteed end. The scripture says, I know the thoughts I have towards you. Thoughts what? For good, not for evil. To give you what? There is an expected end in the quadratic solution and equation of our professional life and of our ministerial life. But you will never achieve that if the variable factor does not deliver based on incompetency, based on incapacity, or based on lack of readiness. You may be willing, but not ready. So at the end of this 
session. I want you not only to be capable, but also to be ready and then to be willing. The only thing I can do is willingness. You understand that? Willingness is left to you. But I will ask in terms of readiness, understanding the problem we are facing, and giving you practical tools that will help you to navigate and to be relevant into the future. As pastors, as senior pastors, as provincial pastors, and also as parish pastors, and as administrators and personnel managers generally. So we understand where we are going. I would have really loved, because I, 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 I thought that we would crush this as, as a workshop. I will be writing on the board. We will we'll have interaction a lot. But because uh, of, of the present constraint, we will just have it uh, uh, by slide alone this morning, which is okay. And I want to also use this time to, to recognize our viewers you know, uh, who are streaming, you know, uh, who, who are joining us via Zoom live. We say thank you for joining us. So I will use two methodologies to try to help us achieve what we want to achieve today. My methodology will be, this will be a strategic workshop. And it will also be a problem-solving workshop. That is the methodology I want to use. I said it would work. Be a strategic and also a problem solving. We have a problem at hand. Pastor Sebastian Okeke, who took the first session about you know, managing change or you know or change management, you know, post-COVID, has given a very good start point for me on which I will leverage. So the first thing, because I said that it will be a strategic workshop, I will explain a little bit of strategy to you. I will be talking at the boardroom level, because that's where I want to take you to. If you must be re relevant, you must be able to sit in the boardroom with the topmost CEOs, topmost superintendents of, of our organization, and give them value. So I will, be, I will be speaking their language this morning beyond just being a personnel and admin or an HR thing. So you must be ready to take this thing. The first thing in strategy is this little picture I've, I've drawn up here. The first thing you will see in strategy is that it talks about the organization. The second element that is critical in every strategy is the environment. And the third is the objective. And so we define in the Institute of Strategic Management of Nigeria, of which I am a fellow, that strategy in summary, based on these three elements, is sustainably relevant as a practitioner, so as to deliver strategically on the organization. And I will see how this plays out as I, as I, as I go on. Don't forget, I said, whenever you are looking at strategy, you must understand what the organization is. What, you know, what are the challenges? What are the pain points? What are the problems? What has changed? What has not changed? What has moved in your organization, in your parish, in your local assembly, in your province? What has changed? In terms of the people, in terms of the processes, in terms of the systems, there are certain things that have changed. There is a common saying that the only thing constant in nature is what? Is change. But you can also leverage change. Once you know it's constant. So, for instance, someone uh, has a meeting in Lagos, an interview. And he, and he arrived late in Lagos. I'm repeating, in Lagos, Nigeria. He arrived late, giving an excuse that it was because of traffic. Is that excuse tenable? Why? We know you cannot do without traffic in Lagos. So why, therefore, 
Will a person give an excuse of change when you know that change is constant? Hello? Listen very well. Recession, like we have it, is constant. I can, I can count years on years. You see, uh, researchers in the Bureau of, 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 uh, uh, of Statistics in, in the United States made us understand that change and recession are, are, are even though difficult, but they are normal part of business cycle. So also, if it's normal part of business cycle, which I'm talking about the environment, you must understand the environment. The environment is not stable. The environment is normally moving and changing. So why should we be complaining of the environment? It's because we, the variable factor, are not ready. We're not anticipating it. And we're not prepared for it. And this is where we have a challenge. And that's what Pastor OKK mentioned about a mind change. A mindset change. A mindset change. Romans 12 verse 2 says, I beseech thee, brethren, by what? Even God is begging you. Don't be stagnant when things are moving. Abby, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies. He's, he's, he's almost on his knees. I beg you, change. So that you won't be left behind. So that you won't be in the dustbin when things are moving. God wants you to be relevant. This is the anchor scripture for relevance. If you must be relevant, you must, you must respond appropriately to the scripture to transform. I beseech you by, by the mercies of God that you must be transformed. Be ye transformed by what? The renewing. The renewing of your mind. Verse 3 says that you will not what? be what? Conformed. You know the meaning of conform? Stay stagnant and let the environment mold you into its own form. And I will take, take you into strategy for you to understand this. As professionals, as pastors, we will be dinosaurs left in the dustbin of history. Remember for once that it used to be, she used to be, if we don't change. You will be administrators known as great flyers, yesteryears. But because you didn't change, you didn't eat this, I beseech you, you will be forgotten. But God forbid that that will happen to you. But it is much more than of action than prayer. Faith without work is dead. A lot, I can see all of us here, including myself, we are faith people. But the Bible says it is dead. We will not achieve the intended good thoughts. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. We will not achieve that good thought, good extended end, except we do something about it. So, Staying relevant. Sustaining relevance is left in your hand. Don't forget, I said in the question of life, of ministry, of everything, God is what? A constant. So please, leave out. If your ministry or church is not working, don't look at God. Because it is his business. And he wants it to work. He said before he left, I will what? Build my church. And what? So if there are problems with the gate of hell, it's not with God. You understand that? There is a constant aspect of God. It is done. The thoughts I have towards you are thoughts of good. Not for evil. God will not contradict himself. So if you want us to stay relevant, stay relevant or become relevant, Whose job is it? If you agree with me, it is your job. Raise up your hand. And the Lord will empower all of us in the name of Jesus. We will open our eyes. Because what you cannot see, you can understand. What you cannot understand, you can change. But you will open your inner eyes to see. Open your understanding that you may change. This is what Jesus Christ was talking to the Pharisees at one time. He says... God has blinded their eyes that what? They may not see. 
and they are here that they may not hear. Lest they hear and see and understand. And what be delivered? Deliverance and change. Res you know, look, I am in a mood for preaching this morning. I'm sorry. Listen, oh, we are in a professional meeting, but I will, I will mix faith with, with, with spiritual. For you to know that everything originates from God. Deliverance, change, and transformation takes their root from God opening your eyes and opening your hair. That's why one of the strongest things I said I want you to do is that there will be an understanding. What is the problem? If you don't know the problem, you cannot do anything. You just be, you just be fighting the wind. Paul said, I am not, I'm not running as one without a goal, without an object. I'm not fighting as one that is fighting in here. So, we must understand, must be relevant into the future. You must understand strategy. That's what I'm saying. I'm taking you to the bathroom. And understanding strategy, don't forget the three elements I said from strategy is one, Organization two, environment three, objective. Things that are in the organization, its resources, its capabilities, you know, uh, the things that have changed, the things that have not changed, its processes, you must understand it. You must be a studious. If I will use two, two, two words that looks the same, studious students. A continual learner, a lifelong learner, just like Dr. Sebastian said earlier, just like you had Dr. John said earlier, and also, you know, you hearing me saying again, you must be committed to lifelong learning. I will ask questions. How many people failed because they didn't understand how to use technology? They failed to meet regularly during the pandemic. We will have them here. How many people are complaining that they are not able to give their report or their people are not contributing money as they should because they too, you know, we had someone, who, you know, a pastor who was complaining that people are not bringing in tithes and offering because it's a Zoom meeting. Then he was asked, are you, what of you? Don't forget I said, you may be, even be capable you may be willing, or you, uh, you may be capable, ready, but not willing. We must combine these three. So I will first of all address the capability in terms of skills, then help you to be ready. Then I believe God will give you the willingness in the name of Jesus. So don't forget, if we are to achieve or sustain relevance, our focus is to be sustainably relevant so that we will become practitioners that will deliver. Okay? Strategically for organization. Maximizing all the resources, capabilities within the organization. Leveraging on even the contradicting environment to deliver on the objective. Our vision is to have a house, a church in Harmony. What's our vision? Five Five minutes. Five minute distance. Walking distance. I mean, okay. Isn't that? Okay. But we will now redefine that. Having a church as a signpost or as a fiscal blend, is it what will deliver our sustainable relevance? Do you understand that? So you will, you will now know what we should do to, to ride on that vision we have to make us still what relevant that's what we will look at so our vision you know one thing that COVID-19 did the pandemic did it has redefined a whole lot of things we want to how to relook our vision whether it will deliver on sustainable relevance in the future vision is great prompted by God but we'll look at how the environment has influenced it in terms of what? Relevance in our time.
The scripture made us understand that the strategy, because I've taken you to the boardroom. I'm taking you to an elevated boardroom of God now. The strategy God uses, the Bible says, he sees the end of a matter from the beginning. So I call it the Z to A strategy. God doesn't go A to Z. God declares the end of a matter before he starts. He tells you, go to the other side. He, doesn't, he won't tell you that there will be storm on the way. But because he has, he has seen the other side, the storm is just a testimony before you get there. Hello? So, I'm saying, if we would also learn from this God-given unfailing strategy, we will use the strategy of end in sight. And that's the summary of where we are going. So, if you will be sustainably relevant post-COVID-19, that means post-COVID-19, you want to be a full, future-proof HR admin personnel pastor. You know, you, mean, you know what I mean by future-proof? Let that sink in. You want to become future-proof. That is, whatever the environment comes, you will still be relevant. And you will now be able, don't forget, I said there are three elements in the strategy. Organization, environment, objectives. So you want to be a future-proof HR admin, practitioner or pastor, who will be able to make use of organizational resources, whether depleted, whether increased, whatever the state it is, to achieve the objectives in an incremental proportion. Leveraging on what you call your environmental constraints today or in the future. And this definition of the end in sight goal of, of how you can become sustainably relevant is so important because sustainability in doctoral studies, we are taught that it doesn't mean you keeping the organization and handing it over to the next generation. You growing numbers and making uh, uh, good uh, structures and money. No, that's not sustainability. Sustainability means you handing over the organization in a better stead so that the next generation will be able to do better than you. The part of righteous, the Bible says, what does what? Shines brighter and brighter the perfect day. So the next generation, Baba Kidayomi, for instance, uh, ensures sustainability by putting the right leaders and structures in place. So, redeem Christian church of God is better than what we had them. Do you understand that? That's sustainability. So now, what is left for, for our present geo is to ensure that with the crop of professionals and pastors we have here, we build a structure that will make us relevant to the future. Not only in terms of five minutes walk distance, but that the church will still be a voice in the wilderness, giving direction, a beacon of light, a reference point. Bible says, even it shall come to pass in, that, in those days. The mountain of the house of God will be elevated up, up, above all other, other mountains. And people will run into it, isn't it? So we will become that which is sought after. Bible says you will become a city what? Sought after. That is what you must, you must focus on as professionals. As pastors. Alright. At this. I want us to explain what so that we have a common understanding of relevance. I said here, relevance may connote either a personal or corporate impact through strategic, sustainable rendition to the organization and other stakeholders. Again, let's pick it. If you want to sustain relevance as an individual, that means you are creating impact or influence yielding strategic sustainable value and i've told you what we mean by strategic okay it is uh, unsustainable sustainable means you you did not leave it the way you met it huh you handed it over better than you met it so as to give the next generation a better foundation to to write even beyond you do you understand that's sustainable now? Now, strategic now means that it is a long distance, not tactical, not short term. And it will affect a whole lot 
of the organization. HR people, admin people, when your guy says you're not strategic, he's saying that you are, you are thinking too small. You're not seeing the big picture. You're not looking at the entire components. That's why you're not strategic. You say we should just do this. You have not looked at A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. You don't look at the long-term effect. When you are strategic, whatever action and plan you take affects not only the now, but in the future and the entire organization. So as HR people, you must begin to think deep. And, and I believe our God is a God of wisdom. Do any man lack wisdom? Let him what? So why are we not having wisdom? We are not what? That is simple. Because most of these things, we think we can do it by human wisdom alone. Don't forget this, the quadratic equation of life. One, God is who? And who? I'm very able. You, me. So if you don't, no matter how strong the variable factor, if you discontinence the constant factor, you will never get the answer. Do you understand that? So this is very, very important. Listen and listen well. Where the world is going to is fulfilling the scriptures. I, just, I want you to understand the, the change we are in. Everything is going spiritual. Everything. Spiritual is that which is virtual. That which is, you can't touch, isn't it? Everything. In preparation for the glorious take home. But also the coming of the Antichrist. That's an, another thing. But I have to discuss that here also because we are speaking to professionals who are also Christians. So understanding this, before the take home, we must do everything what? To create strategic, sustainable value to our organization, to your church, to your parish, if you are, if you are in business, to your business. You must be able to, to, to segment your stakeholders as a church. Our first stakeholder is God. That's what I put in here. You know, if I'm, I'm doing only a corporate retreat, I won't put God there. But we know that whether you like it or not, God is the first stakeholder. So what does he expect from us at these times? How, do, how does he expect us to, to, to relate, to be able to live sustainable relevance? What will Jesus do if, if he were here at this time and in this place? That is delivering on sustainable relevance requirement from our key stakeholder, God. Then you look at other key stakeholders. What do they expect of us? We have a pastoral board of elders and trustees who have given us also even a vision of the church to follow. We have also our provinces, our pastors who takes this, this corporate objective and corporate vision and breaks it down into smaller sets for us to run with. Remember Jesus' teaching. Summarize this way. He that will be a leader of all must be the servant of all. A poor follower will never be a good leader. You are not pursuing wholeheartedly objectives and visions set by, by leader. You can't be a good leader yourself. You show leaders, leadership by example. By being a good follower. So, so that's, that's to them. Then we have other stakeholders. And uh, our church members also, they expect some things. And our responses and reactions cannot be the same as it used to be. Environment has conditioned them, has changed them. Some are desperate. That's, some, some are in dear need. I mean, genuine needs. The government also has brought a new change. Those handling our transport pool and going to Lagos now, you know that you will have to quickly do some things. That, you know that the transport law in Lagos has changed now, isn't it? You must understand what the environment is saying. Else, we will cause problems to the church. You will cost the church more money. 
I don't know, you know, your reader levels or your petrol, your, your, you know, uh, your maintenance schedule for all the papers of your vehicle. You must look it. If it, if it is one month so that you said it before, you must now set something that must automatically alarm you that look, you must not miss it. Else, you get caught by last mile in Lagos. They impound the vehicle. And you know what they do now? Sell it. Then we will now come into a compromising situation where our values will be compromised because we want to get the car anyway. Then you begin to tip. Call bribe. And we will decorate the bribe that you know I was coerced to give it. But if you have done the right thing at the right time, you won't, be, you won't enter into this. That's why I said, think ahead. Be what? Strategic. Look at all your systems, your process, and all that. And look at things that can bring you to a problem. As an admin person, listen very well. When things are going normal and in order, regardless of the changing environment, that is when you are doing well. Hello? An admin person's performance appraiser is A, when things are going, obtain increment in performance of every operation without problem. When there are problems and you do fire begin to solve it and they say you are a hero, that's not a rating in admin. An admin person with strategic must have looked ahead to what could cause the problem and forestall the problem. That's when you have a rating. Now look at this. I drew an equation to explain to you what relevance is. This, sorry. Okay. This, this first cycle, I call it what you have to offer. Your competencies, your skills, your knowledge, your abilities. Hello? Okay. This second cycle, what the marketplace needs. What the marketplace needs may be different from what you have to offer now. There may be a gap. So you moving into that gap to fill the gap is what makes you relevant. Hello, listen. Divine providence by God brings about challenges and problems to make his children relevant at each time of history. Without the famine in Egypt, Joseph would never come to relevance. Without Goliath, David would not, never see the palace. So God brings pandemics and COVID like this to bring HR directors, admin managers, personnel, fellows, and pastors to relevance. And that's why the first thing you must do is change your mindset about problems. The sweet spot we are looking at is a person who knows how to bridge the gap between what he has to offer and what the society needs, what the church needs at this time. That's what I'm saying. In your parish, in your province, in even our international church as within Christian Church of God, what are the critical needs? If, if our geo was to sit in front of you, what would you think he, he, he says are the utmost need that he wants to meet? You rising up to meet it in your own little corner positions you for relevance. He may never have met you, but there is a way in which value opens up the room for you. Value. Value speaks. So I said, you must ask these questions if you want to become relevant. You must provide answer to them. The first question you must provide answer to is this. What are the pain points of my organization? The Yorubas will say, where is the shoe pinching the organization? You may provide every other solution to every other thing, but the thing that will make you relevant is to identify and locate 
the pain points of the organization. For instance, what were the most eat areas of operation in RCCG or in your own business during the pandemic? What were the most disrupted things? And to what degree were they disrupted? You know, there may be 10 things affected. And when you prioritize them on a scale of preference, you will know the one that was most eat. When you address that, you will solve the problem. The greatest problem in time of David was Goliath. Everyone was cringing and fear. Do you know that because Goliath and the battle, they couldn't go to farm. There was less food. If David went to address the issue of less food, it's not, it's not being strategic. Address one problem that will solve all our problems. That's being strategic. And it applies in our home also. In our marriages. We may be, we may be, our eyes may not be open to, to, to the major taproot problem. And we are, we are solving an CI problem. So this is very important. Identify the major kills eels. The pain point. Then the second thing. What are the needed immediate solutions? The immediate solutions are called the survivor solutions. You will address those, but also be strategic by looking at the long-term solution that will bring about sustainability to the organization. So I said, what are the needed immediate, which are the survivor responses? Please, in strategy, we don't look, look at reactions. You think, you plan, you implement. That's what response is. You think, you plan, you implement. While a reaction is new jack, you just, you just quickly do something to show that you are moving. Do you know that there's a difference between movement and motion? I think we know that. Anything can be in motion. Movement is directional. Where am I going? So you think first. So I said, there are two things in terms of your execution and response strategy. There is a survival strategy and what? There is a thriving strategy. When you say something is thriving, is sustainable, is flourishing, is, and before something flourishes, it's long term or medium term. So you combine the two, focusing on your long term objective of what will make you relevant, but executing those long term objectives on a daily basis to make you survive now. So what in your own local parish will be the survival strategy? Please write down. Let's, let's just two minutes. Because I wanted to make this really a workshop, break you into, into teams where we don't have both and all that. But please, personal. Your survival strategies in your parishes, survival strategy in your marriage. These are the immediate things that can help you. Don't forget, I haven't understood for the problem. Because if you don't understand the pain point, you can't now implement survival strategies. Please write them. I won't take your script. It's to help you. Then after having written that down, what will be your thriving strategy? Five years, three years, if Christ tarries. You must think. The Yorubas will say, before the pot can eat pepper, his bottom will be hot. Abi, you understand that proverb? So before your brain will produce, you must put it under heat and hot pressure. You must think. If you want to stay relevant, you must do this. Change something here. You must lead the change and beat the change. I said, consider the challenges in your local assembly. Understand the pain points. Then look at what what should I do immediately and what can I do later. 
don't react. A lot of Christians react. And you know one of the, the, the beautiful thing that shows you that the Holy Ghost even wants you and, 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 and the scripture wants you really to be strategic. That is where we, we learned in Isaiah, they that wait on the Lord. Shall I what? Then they will mount up with wings as they go. And they will run and not be what? Weary, and they will walk and what? Not faint. Now listen. Listen very well. Waiting is taking a step back and not reacting. So you'll be able to think it through with the Holy Ghost. What you will do now? My senior teacher. Then he will give you an idea. Every answer to all problems in life is, is, is an idea. The Holy Ghost will drop the idea. But the idea is not the magic or the miracle. It is what you do with the idea. Cast your net. If he had without his net, nothing would have happened. We won't have the miracle of drops. Do you understand that? Listen. God is breaking certain things here. It's a, it's a professional meeting, but uh, there are prophetic things going forth. Guiding and leading. I said, one of my objectives is that you will receive practical tools that will help you to dissociate from where you are coming from and to take a new step today. You must do something about your situation. Else, prayer alone will not solve it. Prayer is powerful. But you know what prayer helps you to do? It helps God to speak to you so that you will know what to do. It helps clear the way of what, what is covering your eyes and what is covering your ears so that you will understand what to do and then what? Be delivered. Okay, so this is clear. We were here. I hope we are all together up to this day. We are connecting. You are, give, you are receiving ideas. I said you should write some immediate things that can, you know, first of all, identify your pain points majorly in your center, in your parish, in your province, in your family. Then look at what are things I can immediately do to survive this. The things that you take as strategy can be picked from. Don't forget the element of organization, environment, the objective. Some of the things that can make you to succeed and to thrive can also be taken from within your organization. David looked at within his organization what capacity, what skill, what competence do I have that God, the Holy Ghost, will leverage upon. I am a sling shooter. But when one man who was a king gave him his armor to turn him into a sword fighter, he said, no, I've not proven this. Do you understand that? So your competence is your strength. God does not just, God has not led you the way and the direction he led you just for fun. They will be made use one day and this is the day. Is to make you to be distinguished in your generation. Nothing stopping you. Someone said it this way. If out of billions of spam cells that rush to meet your mother's ovum, only you survive as the spam cell and become you. Don't you know that you are a conqueror and you are, and you are a winner already? You, you, so from creation, you are a winner. That was when you could not help it. That was when God knew that you had no part in it. So the equation was 100% God, Abby. But now when you are born, he says, choose you this day. He's left in your hands now. His own is settled. You must be relevant. And the relevance comes from day-to-day -day survival thing. But the survival thing must add up to where you are going. You must think strategically. 
whatever therefore as workers, professionals, people of value, whatever does not matter in the long run, drop it. There are some battles you don't fight. Hello? Hello? When David's brother, we are fighting with him, I, we know you. Your eyes, yours is too. Why, what have you come to do? You've come to watch the battle, Abi? What did, what did the scripture say about David? Says, is there not a cost put here down? Is there not a reason? So, you, I've told you what your eyes have not seen. You cannot understand what to do about it. They don't understand the battle at hand. Like David understood it. He understood this battle was ritual. Everyone there were fighting physical battle. He understood that to finish Goliath, you finish the spiritual before you finish the physical. That was why when he came to Goliath, he says, I have come against you in the name. Then he now used his, his own variable force of the sling. So it was really God enabling the sling. The, but the sling, God had to bless something. Hello? God had to bless something. He released it and God blessed it. It became relevant. Listen and listen well. As we go on, you understand more of strategy. I just want to use this to open up to you. We have not touched strategy at all. This is just the beginning. In strategy, in strategic response, there are two things you can do. You can adjust or you can what? Adapt. You can what? Adopt, adjust, and what? Do you know the meaning of adjusting? When they say adjust your belt, you adjust it from the first hole to the second hole. To... When the old belt don't finish, can you adjust anymore? Hello? Or you, you remember a screw? screw. Huh? When, when the belt is, is loose, you tighten it a bit to adjust it very well. But it gets to a point where if you tighten not to break. That is adjusting. So the adjusting strategy is limited. You know how we adjust? For instance, in family and home, times are tight, so we build a cut budget. Hello? Abi, it is the immediate thing, Abi, build a cut budget. Who never do I'm here? Put your hand up. Because I, I don't do them too. It's the natural thing. We're going to cut what you cut. It's adjusting. But there is a limit to which you can adjust. When you cut the bone, uh, flesh, cut the flesh. When you reach bone, it goes stop. It's the adjusting strategy. It is not sustainable and not make you relevant. Hello? But the adapting strategy is where we are going to. And I will explain the adapting strategy very quickly. In the, you know, in the adapting strategy, one thing you do is that you, uh, you look inside you to cause some certain changes that will leverage on the external dynamics that are changing. Then you use what is the internal competence in the organization for the changing environment to leverage on the changing environment. Let me explain this way. Okay. I think they are, they are, they are because of people at home. Those of you who, have, who know people who surf on the ocean, how many people who know, and people who surf with surfing board, they, they surf and ride on waves. Hello? How many people know them? You've seen them on TV. Okay. Is it possible with that miracle for man to walk on water. Think again, you know. Remember what I said you saw. I said, have you seen people who soft on water before? You said, yes. And now ask the second question. Is it naturally possible with that miracle for man to walk on water? Uh, wait, oh. What are people who are suffering on water? What are they doing? It is a hello. Can you stand on water without sinking? But you have seen people who surf on water without sinking. Therefore, walk on water without miracle. You now see is yes. <laughs> oh, oh, listen. 
listen, listen, please. I want, I, I, I want, I want my brother to talk. Please, Mike here, Mike, 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 Mike. He said something very critical. Please let us hear. Let us hear. Wonderful. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is not possible for a man without miracle to walk on water. Those that are sorting are sorting, being aided by a tooth. So, but the people, uh, miracle will make you to walk without a tooth. That is the difference between walking by a miracle on water and sorting on water aided by a tooth. Okay. Praise the Lord. Please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, we will talk. That's what we said. We have come to break some thinking, some mindset. Yes, sir. There are two things in place here. Miracle is the act of a supernatural being coming to manifestation. But from the teaching we have, we discover that with a strategy in place, you can walk on water. Okay. You want to talk also? Please, please give it to him. Thank you very much, sir. That's what. Listen, the person using miracle is also leveraging on something beyond him. So you understand. So no man can walk on water without leveraging on something. But you can leverage it on God or on strategy. Listen, listen. How do you, when the, you can, you must understand that naturally, without the energy of water, propelling itself to enable you, you won't, you won't, you won't be able to solve. So they wait to see the waves rising. When the wave rises, they know that there is energy. And they move into the energy and, they, and they're going to walk on water. When the energy falls, they, they fall down again. Do you understand that? So you must, under, that's why I'm talking about, look at your environment. Even, this is waves that collapse ships yeah. and people run away from. Surfers go to embrace waves to accomplish their own hand. I'm saying stop, stop running for problems. That's how we're going. And problems. Count it all joy. When you fall into what? Diverse temptation. For it has in it a tool to perfect you, to make you relevant, to make you distinguished. The surfers, what they do is, you see, they've studied, based on science, that water, when it rises, has the capacity of buoyancy to lift you up for as long as the water rises. So if you wave it from there to there, you, you can walk on water for as long as it goes. But if the water is still, you can't do it. So they now made a particular device, okay, that the water will skid and drive naturally by itself. And so, even if it's like Peter, just walking from here to here, he has walked on water. It may not be like Jesus from one hand to the other. Even if it's from here to here, he has walked on water. So, I'm saying that which is meant to become fearful by others can become what pastors, administrators, and HR leaders like you begin to turn into advantage. Your eyes must be different. Your ears must hear different things. You must understand the situation to, to let it on it. There is nothing called fear in life. And there is nothing called mountain in life. The greatest mountain is in your heart, in your mind, in what you see. As HR people, <laughs> look, we are going to a deep, to deep waters. I'm laying a foundation so that by the time you live here, you go with it. I've told you to write some things. I told you, I think you wrote them down. Which you will do. Put them into practice. We are led by the spirit of the living God, isn't it? As many as are led by the spirit of the living God, they are what the sons of God. So if we are sons, we will hear Him. I know my sheep. My sheep know me, and what they do, what? So when you give him time, listen, have you ever tried it? Whenever you give God time to speak, he speaks. But when you quickly rush into it, reaction, you're on your own. In most cases. But I found that people who say God don't speak is because they don't give God time. God speaks at all times. It's wonderful to be a child of God. We are positioned to be the people who will define the course of the world and how things will go. That's why you are called a salt and a light. 
salt of the earth, not of your village. Not of Olindunku village or, or Abribra or wherever you are from. You are the salt of the earth, the light of the world. So if your if your if your perception as a pastor you only limit parish, you are you are doing God a disservice. Hello. And this is where we will go on to see what you will leverage, okay, to bring you into global prominence. Things will change for you. This, those of you who are, who are attending this, maybe virtual or physical, you are not in any ordinary workshop. It's CIPM HR workshop, but it's a workshop with a difference. It will distinguish and set you apart. Make you attain that sustainable relevance you've been seeking in the name of Jesus. Let's look at certain things also. So I'm saying, adapting is to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, let me use this. Adapting is you causing some internal changes inside of you, your mind, your thoughts. You are seeing differently. You are hearing differently. So as to you now be able to see things outside that looks like environmental constraints. You are able to see them as waves upon which you can ride. That's adapting. So, so when the waves goes down, you see that the surfers stay on the beach. They don't go again. Abi. Huh? But the one that adjusts is still on the sea. It will sink. So adapting is you knowing when, the, when there is that move of, of environmental circumstantial situation that can hate you and you leverage into it because you have adapted your internal capacity and competencies to flow with it. Is that understandable now? Can a man walk on water? You have changed, you. Just now. Uh-uh. Clap for yourself. Clap for yourself. Clap for yourself. Let me look at this. I want us to understand. Don't forget, I said you will live here with a better understanding of the challenges we are in. And I defined, I said that, you know, the Bureau of Statistics in America said, Crisis and challenges are not a part of business cycle, even though they, you know, they are unpalatable. I use the instance of traffic in Lagos. So if something is normal, we are now shouting a new normal. This has been normal since there was the Great Depression in 1914. During the First World War, there were several pandemics thereafter. Then when you got to 1948, during the Second World War, there was another. And several, 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 until you get to, to the 70s, the 80s. All of you here will know the time of austerity measure. In the 80s, the Shagari time, Abi, you all know it. There was a global recession. It's not new. Different things causes them. Some are main cost, some are natural cost. Then in 2019, we have another. Twice. In quick succession. This is, was caused by human beings. I think you know. I think you know that. Wuhan, China. Experimenta. Hello? So I'm saying it is a natural part of life. A strategist does not complain about what is happening to him. A strategist only complains if he's not doing something about what is happening to him. The end from, from the beginning strategy of God. God never complains about how man reacts. He recalibrates. He still has that end inside. I must save human beings, isn't it? If he chose this family and this family fails, he will go to the next. Are you? If you refuse to praise me, these stones. But, but the end was, must be people must was what? More praise him. It doesn't change that. 
my covenant will not break. Now alter anything that's gone out of my mouth. That is the strategy speaking. So indeed, in the Institute of Strategic Management of Nigeria, they said that strategies never fail. Let it sink deep. Strategies never fail. It is only the degree of the accomplishments that varies. Listen and listen well. When the man who made the light bulb failed for 999 times, you call it failure. You know what he said? Do you understand that? And that is why, because he documented it also. Any other person? Thank you. Oh my. Ah. <laughs> ah, just started. Oh my goodness. Ah, should, should I stop now? I just started though. Listen. Very quickly. Michael Faraday said he has learned 999 times of ways how not to make the bomb. And that's why because he documented it. Those who are not making bomb are having a free ride. They know how not to. So strategy is not only the way to achieve your accomplishment. But it also shows you the way how not to. So the, the things you call failures, they are vital lessons God is taking you through. On your path to success. As a pastor. As an HR person. As a personnel. As an admin. You become better. And when you weather it through. With God the constant factor. The end is sustainable relevance. You will shine and stand out. Job says he knoweth the way I take. After he has what? Tried me. I will do what? I will become globally relevant. If it was a church, I would say, let us pray now. Listen, the Chinese see crisis. You know, that is how they write crisis. That's, that they, are, they are writing for crisis, those two symbols. The first symbol says a time of danger. The second says what? Well, a time of opportunity. That is why it is problematic places that the Chinese go. That's why they are the global entrepreneurs you see today. They are taking over everywhere. Because they, their mindset from school, from alphabet, ABC, how they teach them. When they say spare crisis, what comes to their mind is time of danger, time of opportunity. But the Yoruba boy, Ewu, Jamba, what, what other thing would we do? Wahala. So you create fear in the mind of, of the children. So he grows up with it. But the Chinese boy, when you say crisis, it will ah, danger with opportunity. Where are the opportunities? So what they are looking for is opportunity. The most war torn countries, that's where you find the Chinese. And they try. Listen, your mind must change at this meeting. Want to be sustainably relevant, it starts from here. The Chinese was made just like you. We are even talking. <laughs> if it were to be the time of the ten spies, they should look at us and say, There are giants there that we can't go in. But that's where they go. Listen, crises are therefore challenging situations. That are embedded with opportunities. They are challenging. Please from today. Remove the word problem from your dictionary. Hello? Remove what? You don't have problem. You have a challenge. Then, pastor, give me money. You don't have money. Huh? But you have money challenge. You have cash flow challenge. It's not that you don't have money. You are blessed with all spiritual blessings. Where? Your bank account is never dry. You have cash flow challenge. The flowing is just what has not dropped. You may have some investment and the return has not dropped. You won't say you don't have money now. It's just cash flow. Your Hallelujah. And the opportunity to make it flow. Understand that 
You want to be relevant. This thing must change. Something must happen to you. The Yorubas will say, if we do it the way it is done, it will always be the way it has been. Abi, or you must break that cycle. You must act without the box. There is no box. There is no box to think. COVID-19 have shown us that if within the box, the box is broken. What the judge the box? They, they, they broke the, the bottom. So you have to think without the box. Ask for creative ideas. Don't open my eyes and open my ears to hear you. Give me understanding of this situation. A time of Daniel is the time we are in. God is looking for sons and daughters who will be in the marketplace who will change things. Who will cause the kings to have generational blessing upon his own people. You know, because of Daniel's prophecy and activities, it affected Nehemiah's time, extra time. It affected, it affected all the prophets following him. They were riding on the wave. They knew that what, the wave had been created through Daniel. And they had it. They were riding upon it. Even when they were building the wall, the Bible said, prophets spoke and it gave them power to build the wall. Hello? Things must change in your life. Global relevance is not far. The Bible says the kingdom of God is not here or there. It is where? It's in you. That is fulfilling the mandate of God for global dominion. Be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish. Subdue. It's where? It's in you. Listen and listen well. Everything you will become has been put inside your hand and your heart when you were born. Bible talks about this this way. He says, when he created every tree, he says, and they had the seed inside them. The seed is what? Their future. Abi? So the future was put inside them. And when he created man, where did he put the seed? So what you do with your seed determines what you become. See what God sees about your seed. He has loaded with talents and benefits. That's why you find that two people will become children of God in one day. And one will quick, quickly surpass him. The one, the other will see be, be, be struggling on the ground. It's what he did with it. You are the result of your consuming passion. Write that down. You are the result of your consummate passion. A, a lot of people we call excellent. They are not excellent because they are more intelligent. But they are persistent and painstaking in following their God-given passion. Because of time, I will move and maybe just touch two more slides. I have how many slides there? Maybe about 10 or so. But I will touch just too much slides for you to see. Please move it if you would like. Okay. Sorry. Don't forget, I said here, in terms of crisis, depending on what you see, you can see that fear of faith. In, the, in that account of Numbers chapter 13, and verse uh, chapter 14, the ten spies that we are sent, the, they saw the same thing physically, Abby, but they saw different things spiritually. So, what determined their hand was what they saw spiritually. The physical environment, I said, environment, condition, object, Abby, the physical environment was the same, but their interpretation of it was different. The the first ten said, ah, they are too big, oh. They will consume us. We, 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 we are like grasshoppers in their sight. Who told them? Their perception. Now, the other two said, if the land can grow this kind of grape that is big, that we brought, that we brought, and if the land can sustain people to grow that big, the land must be very fertile. Opportunity. The first saw what? Danger. The second saw what? 
Let us quickly go out. This is a new season. You cannot use yesterday's strategy. As HR strategies, as admin strategies, as personal strategies, and as pastors who are managing people, you must change. I said, adapt means something changes where inside that leverages on the changes on the outside for opportunities. There are several models we use in strategy. Do this. You can use the sword, the pestle. We can use the five potters, five forces. I'll not be able to break this down. But maybe there will be a time when I will come and teach you real strategy to, to understand this. But the most important thing is that consider your environment. There are opportunities there. The personal analysis says you consider the political environment. What are the policies? Even though there's, the policies may look like obnoxious and, and adverse, there are other, other ways in which you can leverage it for your advantage. Listen, one of the fastest growing churches in the world is in China. I think you know that. It's the underground church. The government says, we catch you, you gather, we kill you. We stop Bibles from coming in. But if you pick a Chinese Christian, a Chinese Christian will recite the entire book of Ezekiel. This one will recite, recite the entire book of Daniel. This one will recite the entire book of Proverbs. So now they will be sharing to you. They are working Bible. The environment does not allow importation of Bible. So the one they get, they will now tear it for each of them. They cram it very well because they may seize the Bible. You are the Bible that will teach the others. Hello? And we are here. Sometimes our Bible gathers dust. Some of you have 10 translations of Bible in the house. Just to show that. Hello? Look at your environment. The constraint. Turn it to advantage. Leverage on it. The last slide, because I said I would just take two more slides. That pestle is what I will show you. What are the things you consider under political? Is that stability? Will my business, how will I leverage the church, my parish, in this case, place, you know, time of stability? What things can work? What, you know, uh, corruption. How do I maintain Christian standard in a corrupt state? How do we do things? You must, there, there are openings. There are opportunities. In a very corrupt society, it shows us an advantage to stand out as different. Do you know that light is not needed in the, in the day? It's not needed in the night when it is all dark. So it is in a corrupt society that we can make a difference. How do you do your business? Call it any name. Bribery is bribery. Listen and listen well. Bible says the standards of God stand sure. Let those who are named by the name of God do what? Depart from it. it no compromise. I know your works. You resist those who do the doctrine of Nicolaitans, but have this against you. You have left your first law. May you not hear that. If one of the stakeholders you must be relevant with is who? Because we are a church organization. That's the first thing. Daniel said, I want to be relevant with God. I will not spoil myself with the king's meal. And because of that, after 10 days, God gave him wisdom. 10 times wiser. What was strategy? The first was obedience to God. I will bear. The Lord bless you.